Hey everyone, let's talk about saxophone voicing. So what is voicing? Well, voicing is the position of the tongue inside our mouth, our oral cavity shape, how open or closed our throat is, and maybe even a little bit how our embouchure is set and how firm and tight our lips are on the mouthpiece. All of those things contribute to what we call voicing. And voicing is what allows us to get the best sound that we could possibly get on the instrument. It also allows us to play with better intonation. So how do we determine where the tongue position and the oral cavity, the throat, lip pressure, all of that working together, how do we determine where that needs to be to get our best sound? Well, I like to start on the mouthpiece alone. I did a master class a couple weeks ago and I had all these saxophonists in there and I had them take the mouthpiece and I just said, blow a pitch on the mouthpiece the way that you normally would, would set up and let's just listen to the pitch that comes out. And most of them produced a pitch like this. Now that's a pretty high pitch. Now I'm gonna just pay attention, like how tight are my, are my lips? Am I biting at all? Where's my tongue? What do I feel like everything is? And I'm just gonna try to uh, get the same feel when I play uh, a note here on the saxophone. I'm gonna play F sharp. So this is kind of a, a pinched, it's sharp, uh, pinch sound. Uh, it's a little bit immature. It reminds me of what a beginner saxophone player would probably sound like. I'm gonna now use a proper voicing where I have my tongue set in a better position, my lip pressure set better, um, and it's gonna sound like this. You know, it's a lower pitch, but it's also got more bottom. It's more resonant. Uh, it's a more appropriate sound for the alto saxophone. Uh, I'll do that one more time. And now I'll use that other incorrect voicing. You can hear how bad that sounds now compared to the other one. So let me use that in a scale real quick. Here's uh, a, an improper voicing. I'll just play like D major scale up and down. So if you noticed, not only is the sound not really that great, but the pitch is getting sharper as I go high and the pitch is going flatter as I go low. Now, if I get the voicing correct, So how do we find this position again? Well, let's go back to the mouthpiece. And before I do that, I'm gonna play a concert uh, a on the saxophone, which is F sharp for alto saxophone. Now you remember that pitch because for the alto saxophone, in the ballpark of that concert A is the pitch that should come out of the mouthpiece. So let me see if I can find that. I might uh, uh, lip it up and down a little bit just trying to center in on that where that's going to be. So what I'm doing is I'm altering my lip pressure just ever so slightly, but not enough to move that pitch. What's really moving is the tongue inside my mouth. And if you were to whistle and pay attention to what your tongue is doing, you'll get a sense for how the tongue is supposed to move in the mouth to find this place. So let me play that F sharp one more time. And I'll try to find that on the mouthpiece. Okay, so I kind of know, I'm kind of getting a sense for what that feels like. And now I'll get that F sharp. Now if I play that really high pitch I played before. And I go back. I get little chirps and stuff too. Like it sounds pretty beginnerish as we would expect. So another thing this does is it helps us be really flexible both with our pitch and with our inflections if we're doing some jazz improvisation maybe. So let's take that uh, D on the alto saxophone again, which we know to be sharp. Um, if I don't make any adjustments at all, so let's say I, I get into a really good proper voicing now. I've figured out where that is. I'm gonna go up an A major scale here. I'm gonna stop on the D. Well, you can hear that D is a little sharp still. So how am I going to adjust for that? Well, I hear some people say, well, open your throat or relax your lip pressure. Well, if I relax my lip pressure, I'm not gonna have as good a sound because I don't have the support that I need. Opening my throat, well, I might be able to do that. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, that brought the pitch down a little bit. 
But if I'm really paying attention to what's going on, as I'm opening my throat, that's actually moving my tongue. And it's also uh, just, for me personally, I'm, I'm noticing my lip pressure is changing ever so slightly. So yeah, opening the throat can have an effect on your pitch. But if we boil it down to what's really happening, it's the tongue that's moving that is causing that pitch to move. And again, if we're whistling, <whistles> pay attention to how that, what that feels like. What is the tongue doing to make that pitch move? And then try to replicate that inside the, the mouth or, or inside your mouth while you're playing. I'll go back up to that D and this time I'm just gonna move my tongue into a, a lower voicing for that, uh, for that pitch. And I've got it much more in tune. What I feel is happening is my tongue is getting lower and the back of it's coming a little more forward. Now the reason I say that's what I feel is because feel is not real. I can't see what's going on inside my mouth. I can only sort of guess as to what it feels like to me. This is something that you're gonna to have to experiment with on your own. Take a lot of time messing around and trying to move these pitches around. You can move them dramatically if you want. Like if I take a high pitch like a high D, And if you watch my lip here, I'm not moving my lip very much at all, but the tongue is very violently moving in the mouth to be able to make that pitch move that far. So the whole point here is to figure out where is the tongue set, where is the embouchure, where is the throat, all those things working together where we're getting the best possible sound. For alto saxophone, that usually happens in the ballpark of when we're playing on the mouthpiece alone at a concert A. Tenor saxophone, soprano saxophone, they're gonna have different mouthpiece pitches, but every instrument requires its own specific set of voicing. And then you're gonna manipulate that voicing as you play to help you with your pitch. And we might manipulate that voicing a lot to get jazz inflections. Overall though, this is how we get our best sound and pitch control on the instrument is learning how to voice properly.